Hello, welcome to A Literary Life. So in today's video, we are going to wrap up my last summer blind date with a book call video, which is part of a series, and I don't even want to count how many videos this took me, but all of the books I have ordered are in, and this will be it for now. Um, so the way this works is that, um, for those that haven't seen the other videos, I'm going to describe the book to you so you can essentially see, does this sound good? Would I want to read this book without the bias of knowing what the book is or what the cover looks like? And then I will, of course, show you the book so that if you are interested, you actually know what book you need to get to read. Um, as always, I have so much fun with this, so let me know if you end up going after some of the books I, I describe, um, or if you have already read them without spoilers, um, let me know what you thought because I'm trying to prioritize what ones to read first. Um, but anyway, that's my problem. Um, if you are interested in purchasing any of the books in this haul, I will, as always, have links to both Amazon and bookshop.org. Below these are affiliated links, so if you choose to use them, thank you. I do receive a small, I think it's 4 to 5% commission. I keep trying to figure it out. Um, but I appreciate it because it helps continue, <laughs> continue the fun. <laughs> of getting more books so we can talk about them. <laughs> oh, so anyway, um, those will be below. But all of these books, I believe, should be available as well at your local library or, of course, your independent local bookstores. So um, hopefully you can you can find them if you are interested. All right, let's get rolling. So the first book in this haul is actually one that I don't have a lot of specific genres relevant to this. And I think this is very cool because it's a historical fiction, but it is also a Western. And this book is set in the United States during the time of the pioneering of the United States, essentially when people were moving out West. This book came out in 2017. I forgot to say that. Our main character is a Swedish boy who has at some point in his life immigrated to the United States and is in California. Um, but something has happened and he is penniless and he is alone. Um, and he's choosing for whatever reason to migrate east. So he is counter crossing the mass movement of humans out west as he goes about his travels. So there's a few different things that I, it sounds like this book's gonna explore that I'm really looking forward to. One is we have a character who's in a foreign land and unfamiliar in traveling. And I'm always very intrigued by that sort of immigration experience and story. Um, two, we have a character I'm going to assume that's coping with loss and loneliness. And what's interesting is it sounds like he develops relationships with animals um, that he then travels with. Now, people do come across our main character and his exploits become sort of legendary. So I'm, I'm really intrigued by how this boy's own story sort of becomes its own force, right? Um, the other interesting thing about this book is that it was a finalist for a Pulitzer Prize. So if you are interested in this book, it is in the Distance by Hernan Diaz. Our author is um, currently, I believe, a resident of New York, so he is in the United States. I'm not confirmed if he's from the United States, um, but that's a little bit I know about this author so far. I have not read anything by him yet, so if you have, let me know what you thought. Um, yeah, in the comments below, I'd love to hear. Okay, so our next book is another genre that I don't really read a ton of lately. Um, I used to love this genre, and it is horror. I, I think just, you know, after a while, I kind of got eh, out of it and I've really kind of gravitated more toward thrillers, but I do still enjoy a really well-written horror book every now and then, especially around Halloween. <laughs> so maybe I'll put this one in my batch for that. But so we have a horror genre. Sorry, I get so excited. Sometimes I get unfocused. Okay, we'll focus. So a horror genre book came out in 2019. Wait until you hear this plot line. I'm so intrigued. So our main character has um, a grandmother who's recently passed away. And her grandmother has a home somewhere in rural North Carolina, so in the United States. And she has told, our main character has told her father that she will go um, and basically help by cleaning out grandma's house. And this is a big commitment because apparently her grandmother was a hoarder. So she takes her dog and she goes and she stays at grandma's. And as she's going through the home, she comes across 
a journal that belonged to her step-grandfather. An initial reading of the journal basically sounds like her step-grandfather was a bit of a wackadoo, um, which is a semi-nice way of saying um, his mind sounded broken and he sounded crazy. And But our main character finds that as she's staying in the house, she is starting to experience some of the things her grandfather described. And apparently these revolve around a strange colony of beings in the woods. So I don't know if this is going to gravitate toward like a haunting or a like alien or a but a fantasy element of creatures, mythical creatures. I have no idea. But we've got this really um, gruesome, I think, element to it. I don't think that because this is horror, I don't think that they're there to essentially, you know, be friends. Um, so that is it. And if you are intrigued, the book is The Twisted Ones. I mean, look at that cover. <laughs> that cover in and of itself gives me the creeps and the title by T. King Fisher. And our author is herself from North Carolina of the United States. So, um, so far we got two authors. I'm curious about the diversity. My last haul had a pretty big group. So yeah, I'm really curious about the authors in this one. Um, I never have any idea until I read about them. So we'll see. Let's keep rolling. Okay, so our next book is a mystery that came out in 2010. And our main author is from England, but currently lives in Scotland. So I'm getting at least out of the United States, a little bit of different backgrounds in writing here. Um, what's interesting that I did not realize about this book is it is part of a series. So I'll be more specific about that at the end because I don't want to give away too much. But I love a good mystery series, or really any series, when you get to know if you really like the character. So I'm excited to kind of, I have a couple missing that I'm going to need to grab. Okay, but our main character, we actually have two main characters. We have our main character of the series, who is an ex-military police officer. And then we have our main character of this book in the series as well, who is a retired police detective. And our essentially our main character is a female um, for this book who, like I said, is retired and she's kind of just been enjoying a quiet life for a bit until she encounters um, a repeat offender that she's familiar with, another female who has a child that... Um, it sounds like there's a lot of conflict between this repeat offender and this child. And for whatever reason, our main character somehow ends up taking care of the child, like agrees to do this and is even surprised herself that she's done this. Um, so she is essentially coping with that. Well, somehow her paths are then going to cross with our main, main character, um, so he, like I said, is kind of going off on his own adventure of rescuing an abused dog, um, which he's managed to rescue. So he's got this dog and then his paths cross with our other main character who's essentially rescued a child. And there we have it. So it's, I'm curious if there's going to be some humor in this. I don't know. I'm finding it funny. Um, but this is the book if you are intrigued um started early took my dog by kate atkinson so the series that this comes from is the jackson brody series and i did ha i have and i read the first one in the series which is case histories um, but there are books two and three before this one that i will have to get and then the fifth book is a uh, yeah, there's five, essentially, that you can get in the series. So if you're looking for a good mystery series, these are five books that are already published. Um, I'll put all five links below if you want to check them out. So I'm, you'll have um, all, the, all the names, but I'm going to have to get reread case histories, and then I'll carry my way through. So I'm definitely going to have to get the full series on this one. Um, and Kate Atkinson, I feel like she's written things other than this series. I know I've read, yes, Life After Life, which is a Todd family number one in the series. I don't know if she's written more of that one. And there's also some other standalone books. So um, definitely a very well-known author. Okay, let's get to the next. Okay, so this next book I actually just heard about through one of you. And 
part of this haul ended, I think, with an Amazon buy two, get one free series. So this, I was able to score this one rather quickly. Um, so this is a non-fiction, or excuse me, fiction book. <laughs> oh my gosh. Fiction book, and it is humorous. And um, this author is well known for his humor and for many of his, his nonfiction um, memoirs as well. Um, so I'm definitely looking forward to this one. It came out in 2010. So this particular book, our author basically tells short stories about situations we face in our world, but through the lens of animals. <laughs> so I don't know. I you. I'm guessing some of you already know what book this is, but it is Squirrel Seeks Chipmunk by David Sedaris. So I am, I'm so looking forward to this book. It is such a good blend. Um, and I would highly recommend David Sedaris is a, you know, very comic, fascinating background, but Grammy Award nominated American humorist, a radio contributor. And he has written a ton of books, and I've really enjoyed, which one did I read? It was, uh, I don't even see it here. Anyway, I'll have to look. It came out like a year ago. Hang on, I'll pause. I can do that. It's Calypso. I did a review on Calypso, and when I said a year ago, I meant like two. <laughs> so time's been flying. Um, Calypso was such a good read by his. So I am really excited to read this one. And definitely, if you have ones of his you would recommend, <laughs> let me know below. Okay, so our next book is actually a classic that came out in the 1930s. Our author herself um, is from England. And this book sounds so good. I, I cannot remember how I heard of this one either. So essentially, it is um, kind of got a blend of mystery to woven into fiction. Um, but the novel begins in Monte Carlo. And our heroine is basically a maid. She's working as a lady's maid. When she's really swept off her feet by this dashing widower and his a sudden proposal of marriage. Who, takes, um, who then takes her to Manderley, his big country estate. And she's beside herself with happiness at this point because essentially her life has gone from um, a working class situation to a wealthy one and um, security and all this great stuff. And she can barely believe how lucky she is. But when they arrive at this massive estate, which I guess kind of becomes its own character in this book, and I love, love when that happens, um, there is a lingering evil, essentially, there. Um, the shadow, there was a previous wife who is now deceased, and um, there's a large shadow, essentially, that this deceased wife has um, sort of, I don't know, cast over everyone at the estate. Um, and it's pretty intense. So I am so, so intrigued by this. And if you are interested, the book is Ra Rebecca by Daphne du Mor Moray. I know I'm mispronouncing that. Um, this was PBS. Um, the sticker on it is one of the great American reads. So I kind of vaguely remember seeing this. Um, but yeah, this is a classic tale of romantic suspense. So very intrigued by this one. Okay, our next book came out in 2019, and it is a finalist, or was a finalist, for the National Book Award. Um, so our author lives in New York of the United States, and essentially this was her debut novel, and it is set in Russia. And in the novel, we have... Uh, two main character girls that are sisters and have gone missing um, off a beach in this small tight-knit community um, somewhere in Russia and I'm gonna have to totally look this up and um, essentially what happens is the book follows the year after the, uh, the sisters disappearance and um, conversations, interviews that go on with all of the women in the community. Um, and I guess it really kind of delves into this horrific um, crime that must have occurred, but a lot of the dynamics that have uh, been, been historically present in the town. And I'm so intrigued by this. Um, if you are interested, the book is Disappearing Earth, and the title it was disappearing. So let's bring it in by Julia Phillips. 
and I'll have to look up. I don't even know if they've announced who won the 2019 National Book Award. I'm sure they have by now. So I'll have to look it up. But this was a finalist for that. Oh, this book sounds so good, too. Okay, so this book came out in 2019. Um, the author is from Australia, and this book is set in Australia. And essentially, our main character um, loses a brother. He goes missing. And uh, very devastated, you know, of course, by this loss. And right after that occurs, she starts to receive um, scattered chapters in the mail of the self-help manual that's called the guidebook. And they just sort of come, arrive to her over time. And she really becomes attached to these kind of odd writings. And the book is going to carry forward in time over 20 years. So our main character goes through her adult life, sporadically receiving these chapters, um, going through difficult things. Um, you know, she's grieved, has been grieving her brother's disappearance. She moves um, across continents. Her, she, she goes through marital loss. Um, it sounds like divorce and the, you know, coping with single motherhood. And just so much, and the whole time this guidebook has really become a comforting voice for her. And then all of a sudden she gets an opportunity, an all expense paid weekend to learn the truth about the guidebook. And she's really excited about it because in her mind it's connected to her brother's disappearance as it was in mine as I was reading it. But apparently what happens is the opposite of what our main character expected. Um, but it will be a journey that changes her life. And this is the, the sentence that I'm reading is, this book will break your heart into a million pieces and put it back together bigger and better than before. So I'm just so intrigued by that right there. And the book, if you are interested, is Gravity is the Thing by Jacqueline Moriarty. Um, so... That, this one sounds like it's going to be another one. I'm probably going to have to have tissues ready. Oh, okay. So this book is um, historical fiction blended with fiction. And because it is one of those where we have three different characters at three different periods of time whose stories will intersect. And I just love that. Um, all of our main characters are women. Um, and this is really going to um, look at how expectations and the restraint placed on women impact their lives. So we have three characters. First one is set in 2016. Um, she is a mother and a daughter and a second wife, and she's trying to become a writer. Um, and she's really just grappling with everything she's experiencing and trying to manage all of these multiple roles. Then we have um, a woman in the 1970s who is a senator's wife. And um, she's trying very hard to be the perfect political wife dedicated to helping her husband pursue his, um, his success in the Watergate era of Washington, D.C. But one night he demands a humiliating favor, it says. And her refusal to obey changes the course of her life along with the lives of others. So... We'll see what that one is. The third and final character is um, Bible era, Queen Esther. Um, so essentially, she's a very independent young woman in ancient Persia, um, where she and her uncle's tribe have this really tenuous existence outside of the palace walls. She makes an innocent mistake, but it essentially just results in devastating consequences for her people. And she's offered up as a sacrifice to please the king, um, hopefully to help save them all. So these are three women whose lives we'll learn about and they were overlap. And if you are interested in the book, it is The Book of V by Anna Solomon. So intrigued. And this author is from the United States. Um, I forget what state she's she lives in, but so definitely unite us heavy here but we got a few other places we got uh, australia and a couple from england so far okay guys five books left let's keep rolling 
Okay, so our next book, it was published in 2019. And it is a fantasy book, but it is targeted at young adults. So again, I mentioned this in a prior video, I don't read a lot of young adult, um, it's not a genre, but target. So I'm always kind of interested when this was one that I kept hearing about and I'm like, I need to read this book. So our book is set in um, a town called, well, I don't want to give it away, but it won't give it away. Fur Haven, if you don't know the book, I don't know. And this is like a heavily wooded town. And the town, the woods are said to be magical and perhaps even haunted. And our main character is rumored to be a witch. And she and the woman um, in her family and around her have always sort of had this tie to the woods and um, a special connection that essentially uh, has somehow connected out the perception that they're witches. But our, uh, we have a boy that has gone missing weeks prior in the woods, and he appears to our main character. He comes across her. But his memory, I think, is um, not there for what's gone on in his time in the woods. And she's very intrigued by this, and she's felt an uneasy shift in the energy from the woods as well. And es essentially what this all leads to is she forms... Um, an attachment to this boy. She wants to help uncover what's gone on, but he's got something buried. There's some secrets there. And what one of the things that does turn out is that he was not the only one that went missing that night in the woods. So it definitely sounds like we have a mystery woven in and it's a little bit dark and kind of magical. And I'm so intrigued by it. I'm wondering how many of you have heard of this book because this is one I just kept hearing about and hearing about and it is Winter Wood by Shay Earnshaw. So I, I may have said this at the beginning, main character is from um, the United States, I think it was rural Oregon, um, so looking forward to that one and let me know if you've read it below what you thought. Okay guys, four more. Okay, so our next book is like a thriller mystery, not like it, it is, that came out in 2015. And we have two main characters. One is a, a detective who is investigating um, a stalker called The Creeper. And he's been breaking into women's homes and attacking them. I'm gonna assume that means rape because it says that his he's escalating. Um, and essentially they can't the police have yet to figure out how he's breaking in and who how who he's going to target next then our other main character works volunteers at a helpline and she gets a call where the main character uh, not the main character the voice on the phone is essentially telling her it sounds like he's confessing to being the creeper and talking about how he really loves these women and this will connect our two main characters that I mentioned as they try to, um, I guess, to some extent, both do their their role, their job in identifying who this man is. And because none of the women in that town, that city are feeling safe. Um, so this book, I forgot to say the author is from the UK, um, but this book is The Nightmare Place by Steve Mosby. Scary. <laughs> I don't know what just happened. I just got distracted. I'm like looking at the cover. All right, let's keep going. <laughs> okay, so the next book is um, an author from the United States. The book came out in 2019. Um, so this book is a mystery and essentially it's got a really intriguing flawed main character and I always love that. So our main character is married. This is set in 1960s Baltimore and she's essentially a pampered housewife it says but she really has wanted to be a reporter and one day she just up and leaves her marriage after 20 years and essentially determines that she's going to find a passionate meaningful life that she apparently doesn't feel like she has and one of her flaws that's mentioned is that she often has trouble um, seeing beyond her own needs um, so even the people that are right in front of her and in her life um, she doesn't pay very close attention to. And she wants to work on the case to help with a forgotten woman, a missing woman's case. And essentially, she's going to partner up with um, a young African-American woman um, and 
get into this investigation and uh yeah and essentially oh the young african-american woman sorry is the missing woman she is going to partner up with a, a, a black police officer it says so i'm assuming african-american i don't know um who cares for maddie more than she knows our main character okay i think i'm getting tired <laughs> This has been a lot of books. All right, so let's let's just make sure we understand. She up and leaves her marriage after 20 years, decides she wants to investigate missing women's cases. She gets really caught up in this one um, young African-American woman's case. And in the course of um, investigating that, she's working with an African-American police officer. It sounds like they develop a little bit, bit of a romantic um, relationship, but... Our main character's inability to look beyond her own needs will essentially lead to this um, something blowing up. And that is, that is, that is it. That is it. It does sound really good. Okay, the book. Let's get to the book. Lady in the Lake by Laura Lippman. Um, I don't know what the Harper looks. I thought maybe it was a TV show. No, it must be the, it's the publisher. All right. And I, I somehow I ordered a large print book. That'll be funny if I'm reading it like, wow, this is nice. <laughs> it's time. It's like, it's definitely look large. <laughs> All right. Uh, link below if you're interested. Oh, this one sounds good. Okay. This book came out in 2012. And it is another kind of mystery historical fiction um, combination. So, uh, th yeah, I've got a couple of those in this haul. Um, so this book, it, our main character is um, working for a temporary agency. And this is like set back in, I'm trying to see if it gives the year and it doesn't. Um, but she's working for a temporary agency when she is sent to assist a ghost hunter. Um, reportedly, a 19-year-old maid's ghost is haunting this barn. And the maid hated men in life. So... Our main character's task, being a female, is to comfort the ghost, is like the plan somehow in death. But our main character gets caught up in a desperate st struggle. The ghost is real. She's very angry, and her powers defy all reason. Um, so our main character is going to work with um, the ghost hunter or his other assistant and essentially try to understand who Maddie really was um, and what's driving this desire for vengeance. And if you are intrigued, the book is The Haunting of Maddie Clear by Simone St. James. All right, guys, we're making it. One left. We're almost there. Oh, so, okay, our next book, <laughs> this is so awesome. There's a lot of series in this haul. Our next book came out in 2015, and it is mystery fiction. And our author herself is actually British-born, but a Canadian who now lives in the United States. <laughs> so she's been around. And uh, this part, I'm not clear on where this particular book is set, but it is the first of a series. And I just checked and there are already five or actually six books because there's like a half. You know, they do one of those 3.5s um, in this series. So it's another one where if you love the characters, you'll have more to read. But we have two female main characters. One is a detective, um, Rachel, and the other one is her boss, Essa. And um, Essa asks Rachel to work this case. Um, the case itself is particularly unusual because um, apparently Rachel's specialty focus area is on minority, like sensitive cases. Um, this one appears to be a man who has fallen, accidentally fallen off of a cliff and um, is deceased. Uh, and normally a case like that wouldn't fit Rachel's area. But once Rachel um, starts to investigate it, she finds out that the man is living under an assumed identity. And now things start to come together on why her boss may have had her work on this case. Um, he is, she figures out who he is, and he is in fact a war criminal that was previously involved in a massacre. Um, a Sri Branica, I'm not even sure where that is. I'm going to look that up. But it was a massacre, 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 I can't even talk, of 1995. Um, 
And so there's a lot more at play. Um, and this is a spellbinding debut. So this is the author's first book. And like I said, it's one of those I love this because if I really like the characters, the writing, I know there's a whole series I can follow. If you are interested, the book is The Unquiet Dead by Asma Zahanet Khan. I'm, I hope I said that correctly. I mean, you can see it below. All right, guys, we did it. This one was hard. This one was a hard one for me. <laughs> I don't know if it's just been the week, but thank you for bearing with if you if you did and making it through. And as always, let me know what you plan on reading, if you um, found any intriguing from this haul, and if you have suggestions based on the authors and the books, um, definitely let me know as well because I, you know, I, I just keep adding to my list. Um, but that is it. So let's go read some books now. Happy reading.